Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in the last episode we had already discussed about Amazon MQ and as I already promised you that we'll be doing a small hands-on demo on this one so here we are okay so today we'll do a very short hands-on demo for Amazon MQ and I'll show you how it works and how you can create one for yourself okay so if you are ready let's begin Okay, so this is your AWS console and uh, the one that we are going to search for is Amazon MQ, isn't it? Amazon Q. Okay, so Amazon MQ managed message broker service for Apache Active MQ. So this is the one that we are going to use today. Just click on this. Okay, so this is the page that you will get once you click on it. So Amazon MQ is a managed message broker service for Active MQ that makes it easy to set up and operate message brokers in the cloud so you can migrate your messaging and applications without rewriting code so that is the basic advantage that we get and we want to have isn't it when we are migrating applications to the cloud so here there are three benefits that you can see here like accelerated migration so amazon MQ supports industry standard apis and protocols so you can migrate messaging and applications without writing code that is what we already discussed and reduced costs so Amazon MQ provides cost effective and flexible messaging capacity and you pay for broker instance and storage uses as you go. Okay, so this is what actually we are going to do today. And here the price and cost are already mentioned. But the one that we are today going to concentrate is getting started with creating a broker. Okay, so this is the place where we're going to create the broker. So just click on get started. Okay, so once you click on this, you will come to this page where you can select your deployment and storage type. So I hope you have seen the previous episode that we already had about where we actually discussed about Amazon MQ, where I already mentioned that what is a single instance broker and what is an active standby broker. Okay, so you haven't watched it, then please make sure that you do watch it and then you can come here so that you can get a better context on what we are trying to achieve here. Okay, so the first thing that we want to select is basically now the single broker because I don't want to use a active standby broker now because I'm not working on any high availability or task or um, I don't have that requirement right now. So first we will select the single instance broker. So this will be my deployment mode. So if you click on info, you will get the details about what exactly these two mean. You can go ahead and read them, but if not, you can just close it and the storage type here. So I already mentioned you before, like there'll be two storage types. So one which uses the Amazon EFS and the other one which actually uses Amazon EBS. So the first one is durability optimized where you basically use Amazon EFS. It provides the highest durability and data is stored redundantly across multiple availability zones and can be shared between active and standby brokers. Okay, so this is the one that we're going to use today, but you can as well use this one, but it cannot be used with active standby deployment. So for active standby brokers, you can only use durability optimized uh, Amazon EFS, but for this in single instance, you can use both of them. Okay, so for now, I'll be using this one itself. Durability optimized. And here, this is a sample blueprint for a network of brokers. So if you're using like AWS cloud formation to actually deploy these uh, MQs or uh, if you want to have any predefined template for you for the network types that you want to achieve. So you can use one of these blueprints like for mesh network of single instance brokers or mesh network of active standby brokers. So this is basically a template that you can use it for your cloud formation deployments. Okay, so I'm not going to use any of these. So this is fine for me, the deployment mode and the storage type. And I'll just click on next. So here, this is the configure settings where you have to provide the name of the broker. So my broker, alcoholic. I'll give this a just a name. You can give it anything that you want. Okay, so here, there's a broker instance type. So this is the one mq.t3.micro used for basic evaluation of Amazon MQ. So we can use this because we are going to just evaluate it. Okay. The beauty of this is basically you can use it for free as it comes along with free tier for a single instance broker deployment. So I'll be using it. So it gives me two virtual CPUs and one GB RAM and I don't worry about the network type. So it's okay. So you can go ahead and select this. And if you want to, you can go ahead and select any of these because it's your choice. Okay, so but I'll choose this one mq.t3.micro. 
So the next thing that we want is ActiveMQ access. So there's basically a simple authentication and authorization where you can provide the username and password. Okay, based on the requirement that you have, you can provide any username and password, but there are certain caveats that you have to follow. So for the LDAP authentication and authorization, you can provide your organization's Active Directory LDAP server details. So you can provide the fully qualified domain name, service account username and password, and the DCs actually that you want. Or if you're using any special uh, directory structure that you can have, then you can just provide it here. But for now, for the demo, I'll just choose a simple authentication. Okay, so I've just given this my broker one two three and there's the username that i'm giving right now okay don't worry i'll be deleting this as soon as i am done with this so you'll not be able to access it okay and there are some additional settings as well where we can choose the broker engine version so there are multiple versions that you can choose based on your requirement or the migration that you're trying to perform so i'll just choose the latest one that i don't have any requirement for but still okay so here there you can provide the broker configuration just like i told you that there will be broker configurations that you can provide where you can have an xml file okay so there you can provide the configurations as well so here i'll not provide any xml files or any configurations file because i don't have it right now okay so this is the first time i'm using amazon mq so now the next thing is logs you can also attach your cloudwatch logs to this and you can just publish them to cloudwatch for auditing and other purposes that you can have like for if you want to have any scaling dependent on that you can do that and the general things that you do with the cloudwatch okay and the next thing i told you about security network security so you can have them placed behind your vpcs or you can use an existing VPC and subnet. So here, if you select this, it'll choose the default security group that is already associated with your VPC, or you can click on this and choose one of them which have been already created. Okay, so I'll just choose this one for now. Or for this VPC and subnet, you can just select on this one as well and you can provide one of the VPCs. But as I have already created only one VPC, <laughs> so I'll, I can only use the default one. Okay, so that's the one I'll be choosing and encryption i can enable encryption but i'll not do that the next one is the public accessibility yes we need this public so that i can use it and for maintenance as well you can enable automatic minor version upgrades so you can select this or uncheck this based on your preferences and there's a maintenance window you can select this and you can provide one of the maintenance window that so that it will be scheduled in that particular time so if suppose there is any minor version upgrades that are happening then it will be happening within this maintenance window so let's suppose i want for saturday uh, three o'clock then it will be done at this particular time okay so don't worry about we'll not do this right now. okay and tags are also optional if you want to provide you can provide them but i'll not do that okay okay just click on create broker so now the broker that we have created it's still in progress and it is going to take about 15 minutes so you can just wait for that and i'll grab some coffee and i'll come back okay so now this is finally in the running state so the next thing that you're going to do is you're just going to click on this my broker pytholic which we just created and just click on this so once you're here you will get so many details that you want to know and uh, it can be really helpful for you as well so the first one is the specifications it tells us the broker state is running the name the instance type deployment mode the storage type that we have selected the engine type and the engine version and when it was created and the configuration okay and the subnet and vpc and uh, the security group so this is the ip address that we have and here this comes the important part okay so these are the connections that you use so access your queues and topics and connect your application to the broker if you disable public accessibility for your broker your endpoints are reachable only within the vpc okay if so if you want to restrict this within the vpc you can make it private and you can have your individual vpcs being able to access it but rather than that if i want to use it right now i'll be making it public for a short period of time and i'll just delete it okay so this is the url for the active mq web console if you just right click and open it this should open hopefully and these are all the endpoints that you have okay so i have already told you that amazon mq supports multiple protocols i already told you that amqp stomp mqtt and wss and open wire so so in the exam if you hear any of these protocols and if you can relate it to the answer that is already there for amazon mq then this would 
be a preferable choice okay so this is the user pythonic that we have we can create users as well and the tag that i hold, don't have any tags right now okay so not a problem so this is not loading for now okay so what is the port that it is using right now 8162 i think my security group doesn't have this port so if you face this problem and you're not able to connect go to the security group and allow that port that should be fine so this is the security group that i have that is ec6f118d just click on this and you have the inbound rule so you can edit the inbound rule and we have to add a rule here okay so we'll add a custom tcp the port will be 8162 which is the one that we have here okay in the url that you can see there's the 8162 the port number so this is the port number that we're going to allow okay so i'll allow it from everywhere right now okay you can just delete this uh, ipv6 and just save it so once you have saved it what you're going to do is you're just going to click on this and open it see it has started so now based on the port number that we have allowed it is able to communicate and we are able to communicate with this okay so now what we're going to do we're going to use it right so there is a manage active mq broker that you see here just click on this url so here it'll ask me for the password and the username so python Alec and uh, my broker one two three four okay so this is the active mq broker so there are a few things that you need to understand here but they are not exactly important for the exam but you can create queues you can create topics and you can create subscribers so these are a few options that you get here and you can customize them or you can use them as per your requirement and i would request you if you want you can learn active mq and you can try the options here so first one is the queue if you click on queue here so you can create a queue as well so if i give a name my my queue and create it so here i have created my queue okay so if you have already watched the demos for sns and sqs i think you might be able to relate it okay so this is the queue that i have so this is my queue and there are operations here so one is send to one is purge and one is delete if you click on send to it will give you an option to send a gms message okay so here there's a message destination that i have and here i am able to add the message okay so this is my message i need to send it so you can see i have one message pending this is my queue if i click on this this is the message that i have okay this is the message id if i click on this i will see the message so this is basically a very small example on how active mq works or how amazon mq works okay so now what you're going to do we are just going to clean it up okay we have created it now we'll clean it up so go to amazon mq click on this radio button and click on delete so once you have clicked on that just you have to enter the name of the broker that you created and then you can just delete it okay so now the deletion is in progress and once it is deleted nobody else will be able to use it so now we have deleted the broker also and the broker my broker pytholic is being deleted and deleting a broker takes about five minutes okay so we can wait for five minutes and it will be deleted automatically so create your own brokers in the free trade account that you have and try to see or try to change configurations try to upload a xml configuration that you have okay anything that you want you can experiment on this and by experimenting we learn a lot of things okay so that was my motive behind saying these things at the end okay so i hope that was interesting for you as it was for me i'll meet you in the next one it's pytholic signing off